And I think a lot of people think that, and that's why there aren't necessarily a lot of hedges in this market. And, and to that point, Manis, our next guest yes. is preparing for what the market isn't preparing for. He is writing, neither hard landing nor inflation risks are priced, which to us makes long volatility and long dollar positions a cheap hedge or diversifier in a 60-40 portfolio. Joining us now is Jochen Krenmeier, Senior Portfolio Manager at Tresidis Asset Management. Jochen, so okay, market's not preparing for a hard landing nor reflation risks. Can I ask, which of those tail risks do you think is more likely? Hi, first of all, thanks a lot for, for having me. It's a pleasure to be in the show. Um, so for us, the risk of a reflation scenario is the one, according to the latest fund manager survey, which only 3% of the market participants were an answering to. And what we have seen lately is a, a stronger inflation, especially in the US, than the consensus was expecting, also driven from the super core component, but also driven from wage inflation. And that's clearly for us the risk. If we see a second lack of inflation, that would be um, extremely dangerous for multi-asset portfolios. And therefore, we like to, to find cheap hedges in that market environment to protect against a positive correlation scenario we have seen in 2022. That reflation risk is, is certainly something that we imagine Powell will double down on or, or the risk that, that inflation has not been vanquished. You would adjust the portfolio, I presume then, we asked you in the break, you know, you've got the portfolio adjustment 40, 50, 10, which is an alternative to the classic 60, 40. Let's hone in on the 10 because that is a commodity apportionment. Is that part of the reflation and growth narrative? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we lowered a bit the, the equity weight, especially using uh, puts and color structures to, to protect a bit on the equity side. Um, on the fixed income side, we are still rather constructive on the European part. But last, uh, the question you were asking, the 10% of commodities, that's the one which could bring us uh, the diversification effect. So on the first side, um, we have the, the geopolitical risk, which are not fading away. Um, secondly, the last year's CapEx has been extremely, extremely low, so that kept, could bring us uh, bring up some pressure on the supply side. And last but not least, we see first indicators out of China, which are pointing uh, rather to the, to the upside with another sti fiscal stimulus. And all that together brings uh, the commodity section as a yeah, good diversifier on mm. a cheap price to us. So if you need a diversifier in a 60-40, because of course the whole idea of the thing is that stocks and bonds trade in opposite ways. Of course, that hasn't been true with inflation risk. Is it your estimation then that that positive correlation between stocks and bonds continues from here on out? Yeah, especially if inflation is, is trading at these levels, so above 3%, above 2.5%, which especially for the U.S. we are expecting going into 2025 mm -hmm. until we reach the 2% target. There will be, there will be markets and phases um, where we have positive correlation between two, these two asset classes, and that's, uh, that's the point and the risk we are trying to, to hedge ourselves and to find ways to, to diversify our portfolios. In this case, using the commodity section, but also we do like the U.S. dollar from a European perspective, because um, if we see this rate diver diver divergence between European rates and U.S. rates, we think um, we think the dollar has to catch up. What about the possibility of no cuts in the United States of America, as, as suggested as, as a risk from Apollo's torsten schlag? That would, of course, embolden your dollar call. Uh, and the rate differential narrative, wouldn't it? First of all, uh, agree or disagree that that is a, a real live risk of no cuts 2024? Yeah, the no cut scenario is something which is not priced by the market. So markets are still pricing in uh, three to four cuts within this year. But if you listen to the, to the latest um, Fed speakers, so they try to push out a bit further on uh, the, the rate cut expectation to the summertime. And if we still see core inflation way above 3% and this really, really strong employment market out of the U.S., I think there's no, don't, no need and no rush for the Fed members to cut rates quite early. So I think that's, that's a life risk uh, Torsten Slug was um, indicating to. <laughs> so what do you do with bonds then? I mean, Manis and I were talking about PIMCO, a lot of different asset managers. Yeah. All, all I can remember is PINCO at the moment. But <laughs> so EWS, like, there we go. Thank Amundi, you, Black, every, everybody's in there. There's Literally, everybody. Yes, thank you, Manners. Literally, all these asset managers are coming out and saying, buy the dips. Sure, you got burned by being long this bond market to start the year, being long duration, but buy the dips. Jochen, 
when you see that kind of action, when you see selling, it doesn't sound like you'd be willing to buy the dips. I got to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, we, we would start to buy the dip uh, rather on the European uh, fixed income curse because um, there we have a disinflation trend which is uh, very much intact. On the one hand side, we have a supply driven inflation which should fade away and the ECB can, can reach the target already in Q3 of this year. So I think the ECB in that sense uh, can also lead to the rate cutting cycle and therefore we prefer to buy the dip rather on the European side than on the US side. For speaking for US rates, uh, we would rather take the 4.5 to 5% uh, area to, to add on on our US duration um, risk. Um, beside of that, we, we prefer over there the tips yield, um, which, which is quite attractive to us, especially at the longer end. Okay, so you are prepared to be brave. Good. Come back and tell us where, 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 just how much you've loaded up. Joachim, thank you so much for being our guest this morning. That is Joachim uh, Kremar of Tracide. Tracides Asset Management. Quick snapshot 